Hello guys, welcome to the stream. Today we're going to be reviewing A10 Zarya. Right now I believe he is rank 1 Zarya in EU. Uh, yeah, B10, this is a smurf account. So, let's take a look. A ladybug just landed on my desk. Or almost only Zarya on this account, which is pretty impressive considering the meta right now is double shields. 58% win ratio, actually pretty impressive. Uh, right now he's hovering around 4th. Five, six, seven. Currently rank seven, but he is, as you can see, one of the only players who is playing Zarya. And apart from this guy, Quig Quig, I also know he's a pretty good Zarya. I'm gonna try to get some bots. Um, but in terms of overbuff, he is rank one. So that's kind of why I'm curious to have a look and see what A10 is doing well, and see if we can learn something from A10. And this should be really interesting for me because I'm an off tank player. So I'm like. I want to see how I can improve on the Zarya here as well and see what A A10 is doing differently. Or in this in this case, B10. This move account is, uh, yeah, B10. Right off the bat, he's playing against uh, an Orisa. He's playing against Onigod on, on a hitscan, one of the Contenders players, previous Dallas Fuel, uh, of which the hitscan player. FWB, I've seen this guy's name around a few times. I uh, don't know any of the other players on this team, but they're running Double Shield, Anna, Mercy, uh, Ash Tracer. Team 2 are running with uh, obviously A10 on the Zarya. We have, uh, I'm not sure who this Tracer is. I have recognized Taboo, I've seen him quite a lot. He's a high ranked player. Um, I also recognize this name, but I don't know who it is. I think it's a Smurf account. Um, and then they have, uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting tank line actually. They have Zarya and Sigma, which is not something I would think would work that often. So I'm really curious to see how he makes this work on the, on the Zarya here. So they have Zarya Sig, Ash Tracer, and they have Bap Zen. So, FB Alint is Psycho. Oh, okay. So, pretty stacked team then. Pretty stacked. Uh, both teams pretty stacked. Okay. So let's see how he's playing. So, pretty normal stuff. Just getting some energy here. Use his self bubble to take some spam. Uh, projected bubble doesn't get a whole lot done there. I think this is one of the issues with playing Zarya Sig. I believe that the Sigma actually showed it off there. And this is one of the reasons I don't like playing Zarya Sig in ranked. Whenever people I'm playing Sig, and one of my teammates picks Zarya, you know, I, I don't like it. And and we, we saw exactly why there. Like, the Sig isn't aware of how to play with this Zarya. If you're playing Sigma and you're playing with a Zarya, you need to make sure that you're letting shield down, you're taking the damage, you're soaking some damage, and then you continue shielding up. Otherwise, you're going to leave your Zarya on, on half energy most of the time. So... A little bit, I mean, not necessarily A10's fault there. Um, I'd say that's more so Sigma's fault for not knowing how to play with um, with the Zarya here, but... Okay. The dc What's going on there? Okay. Uses both bubbles. Actually gets a lot of energy there. Playing a lot more defensively now his bubbles are down. Psycho just got two picks. Where's the... Um, Throws the ally bubble up quite easily there. Getting really close to the Sigma. Again, he's playing defensively when his shift is on cooldown, making sure he doesn't get punished. The, the one thing he has to be super careful about versus this comp is the Orisa Sigma. Because all it takes is one Orisa pull when he has no self bubble, and that could potentially be the end of him. A damage boosted Ash and a rock, and that's going to be the end of you for, when you're playing Zarya. Um, He beams the Sig down. I think they already had two picks here, so this is this is gonna be a pretty easy cap now. And you know, he's beaming people down right now. He has full energy here, so Yeah, he's doing so much damage with those right clicks. Throws out the bubble because he's not gonna need it for another eight seconds or so. Going forward, trying to fix Interesting, he's not using his bubble there. He's holding onto his bubble even though the, the the ball is hard pressuring him here, which is surprising. I would expect him to use it there, but maybe he's just valuing that bubble so highly that he doesn't want to get caught out of position. Uses the bubble into Ash. Pushing very aggressively here on this flank. This is so aggressive. Okay, he almost one-shots the Tracer. Oh, that's so unlucky, actually. He was really trying to bubble the... The mercy there. I think it was like a pixel away from being able to bubble her there. Nice prediction on the, the ball landing there. Okay, 
Okay. So he throws the grab out straight away there. I think he was expecting to get more than just a tracer in that. Uses the projected on Sigma when he's going forward. Points some pressure there. He has no bubble right now, so he needs to play defensive with this, which is why he's backing off. And also pay attention to when he's backing off. He's trying to keep close to these walls here to avoid, uh, obviously, like, playing out in the open. At least when he's playing closer to these walls, he has a position where he can back off to. So he sees the tracer, he's forcing the tracer out. Oh, okay, yeah, he's trying to hit the he's trying to hit the Arista as well, but she's using Fortify. Which means that obviously it's very difficult to Well, it's impossible to grab grab an Arista who's using Fortify. So they kill the tracer. He's still playing defensively, he has no self bubble right now. Okay, drops for the Mega. This is this is smart, I like that. Dropping for the Mega. He has no self level, but I think he's just barely okay. He's playing so like he's playing on the edge of his limits every every single time. Like his bubbles are coming up just at the right times. Use a self bubble. And I notice how he's always been at high energy. Okay, this is, yeah, yeah, you can see there, he he made a, sm a slight miss, well, a big mistake there. He over-pushed here, and yeah, I believe he's going to get punished. Yeah, he's going to get punished for that. So one of the most important things for you as Azari is just staying alive, because you want to keep that energy, right? You want to make sure you're staying alive, you're, you're pumping that grab, you're farming that grab, and you're keeping your energy. Oh, that right click was, that was nasty, dude. He hits him with a flick. Has no bubbles right now, so he's not playing too aggressive. He's very loose with his bubbles, actually. He's just, like, chucking them out. Like, I don't... I don't know if that was a good bubble, because I think she was, like, relatively safe up here. I think he was just, like, a safety thing, making sure that she was able to get out. But... Yeah, he's really, really loose with how he uses his bubbles. He has no. Oh, that's tragic. He had no self bubble there, and he had no energy, which is why he can't really go aggressive forward, right? He has no. He has no self. He just uses self there. Doesn't really get any value from the self bubble, so it's difficult for him to go forward after this. And this is a really nice. That's a really nice coach gun from Ash. Gets the boot. Obviously, for you as a Zarya, like, you're not like. Um, you don't have any mobility, right? So positioning is, is like absolutely key. If you're mispositioning, the only thing you're going to use to save yourself is that bubble, right? So positioning, this is why a lot of people have troubles with Zarya at a high level, because you can get punished if you're out of position. So the best Zarya is they have really, really incredible positioning just because if they're not in a good position, they're going to get punished a lot more than if they're playing a character like Winston, Diva. These kind of characters with mobility or even ball. Okay. Not using bubble there. Uses bubble on the ash. Getting some energy from the from the bob. Has no bubble, so he's playing defensively. Again, you can notice when he's like when he wants to play defensively. And right now he, he was trying to help his Ashen here. He realized he's not winning this fight. He's playing on his shield range as well. He realized he wasn't winning that fight, so he's just getting out now and he's... I'm assuming, yeah, he's calling with his Mercy that he can go for the bubble, so she can res. Looking for a flank. Okay, takes out the bat for free. A really nice trade. Wait, what? Okay. So, he did a flank there. He gets the BAP and he sees the Mercy, but the, the issue is with this flank is that his team is not really in a position to help him. So he's kind of just on a solo mission here. This is like the solo carry mindset. 
The other issue is like he's just used his self, so once that self is down, he's got nothing to save him aside from his positioning. And his positioning isn't good isn't good here. Because he's just so deep. And this is really kind of like why heroes like Ryan and Zarya work so well together because Ryan is generally the one taking most of the aggro, right? He's the he's the one in the front line taking all of the aggro. So for him to have a Sigma who's an off tank, Sigma's mostly going to be off angling. He's going to be playing these off angle positions. So it is a lot harder for you as a Zarya because you don't have that front line pressure. You don't have that Reinhardt that's getting close and personal with the enemies. So you're kind of the one that needs to go in first. And that's not where Zarya wants to be, right? Because she needs to rely on that positioning rather than um, just going aggressive and like using her resources to tank. But she doesn't have, she's mostly a DPS. She only has um, the two bubbles, right? So use your self bubble over there to try and get some energy from the Ash. Unfortunately, he doesn't get any. And this is a situation where he does ha he has no bubble, there's no way he can walk across here. And we're definitely seeing why Zarya is kind of tough in this meta. Especially when you're playing versus uh, characters like Arissa with a lot of shields. Uh, Arissa Sig especially. Walks, walks into the mines, trying to get some energy there. Okay, Arissa so overextended there. Just gives give a free kill. Again. Fox and getting some energy there. Bob actually almost kills him. And this is where he wants to be, right? He's getting high energy now. He likes going for these flanks. I mean, it seems to be working out for him. Like, he's taking this flank, he hits the supports, forces the drone out. By he, he basically just bypassed the uh, Team 1's tanks there with his push. He totally bypasses, bypasses the tanks. And now he's in a position where he, you know, he forced his drone. Click follow up. Team Team Two's tanks there definitely. Uh, team sorry, Team One's tanks nowhere to be seen. So this is a pretty free fight for them. Okay, so he's just denying the ball. Get some energy. He still has a self bubble if he needs to. Use his self bubble and now backs off to this position here. He doesn't want to peek the window, right? If he peeks the window, this is where he can potentially get pull rocked. Uh, sorry, not pull rocked, just pulled, uh, caught out of position. He needs to make sure he's not playing inside this window range. So he's just poking. He's really, really effective with these right clicks as well. Like, it's putting so much pressure on the tracer just with these right clicks. Going forward aggressively, use his bubble. Use his bubbles, getting out, just resetting. Playing very defensive right now. His bubbles are coming back up cooldown, so he is going forward more aggressively. Okay, he goes he does go for the bubble. And now he's 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 definitely at risk now. And the thing is, again with playing Zarya at high level, what is that sound? The thing is with playing Zarya at high level, like you can get punished a lot easier than you would in lower ranks, right? Because, firstly, people are a lot better at recognizing when they, you've used your cooldowns. So, for example, as a simple example, I use my Road Dog Hook. In gold or lower levels, people don't realize when you're using important cooldowns. They don't, because they're focused too much on their own game. They're focusing on playing their character. They don't, they can't take in that, I'm sorry, they can't take in that extra information on okay this person's used this cooldown this person's used this cooldown i can punish this person now when you're playing the zarya here if a10 uses his bubbles the enemy team team two uh team one are going to recognize okay the zarya has used bubbles we can now put much much more pressure on this zarya because he has no he has no defensives right and it's more about recognizing when you have no defensives and being able to recognize and punish that and you can see here that every every single person is putting focus on the zarya here the traces on him the um the Arissa's on him, the bat might even might have even been shooting him there. And he has to use Grav as a defensive ability there. It doubles as an offensive uh, ability because he gets the tracer kill. 
But again, you can see this Aris is just hard tunnel visioned on him because he knows he has no bubble. He does actually manage to get out there just in time with the bubble. Again, playing very close to this corner here. He doesn't want to play in the open because this is where Oni God can land one headshot. And then he has to make this trip towards the corner. He's playing the corner, throwing out the right clicks and just kind of like playing on this corner until he gets his bubbles available. And then we're probably going to see him move to a position maybe behind the payload or on the left side. Players are very good at playing with natural cover at the high level. He's sporting his bat. He does use bubble there, so he can't actually save the bat. And he's just going to back off. He thinks this is a reset. And notice how he's just trying to get out with his energy here. Runs towards the mega. Has his bubbles up. He's good. He's safe. Is this a ranked game? Uh, yeah, this is a ranked game. This is um, a high, uh, yeah, high, high ranked game. And again here, you see how hard this Tracer is going for him because he knows he has no bubbles. And the worst thing you can do as a Zarya is, is get killed and have to reset that energy. Targeting the BAP straight away. Windows up. He has no bubbles, so he needs to play way more defensively right here. He's again just using this natural cover really nicely. Is he going to get his bubble back up? He does get his bubble back up. So he's safe. He's just playing really well around these um, the bubble timings and making sure that he's trying not to be in a position to get punished. And this is really good for team uh, team two. They get the drone. Everyone's low. Oh shoot! I thought he was going to get the bat there and that, but that was that was a really nice grab. Huge grab. He's happy just to throw out this grab. Because he's, he's seen the, the drone, right? And, and everybody knows what it's like playing against the drone. They throw drone. It denies four abilities. And so he's seen the drone. He's really happy about this. Because he knows there's no defensive now that's going to stop these guys. Um, aside from shields and potentially uh, matrix grasp. But you can still beam. Yeah, look how fast the sigma shield breaks. From here, the Widow gets sucked in. And this should be a cleanup now. They've killed three. Um, red team are just dominating all over the point. This should be, yeah, this should be free. It's just a, just a case of focusing down the targets now. He's targeting the BAP straight away. Because he knows that the BAP is keeping everyone up. Yeah. So he just ignores the bomb and goes straight for the BAP. Together, we are strong. I'm really interested to see how he plays on second point defense because second point defense is a lot about the high ground control and a lot of Zarya's have this habit of uh, conceding the high ground control and playing on low ground when in fact you can play from high ground and you can have that control and that safety that the high ground provides you rather than playing on low ground so I'm interested to see if he does opt to play on the high ground a lot on second point if he even gets the second point that is Hey, he's walking forward. Really nice move. A lot of low, uh, low level Zarya's don't know this. But start of the round, you want to use your self bubble to get you some energy. So he's just simply, he knows he knows this sight line is where all of the spam is coming, right? He knows this sight line here is where all of the spam is coming towards the beginning. So what he's doing is he's just walking forward, using his self bubble. The hands are spamming away, so this is great for him. He likes playing versus characters with spam because it's consistent energy that he can get. What he's doing here is walking forward takes uh, uses self bubble takes the spam his sigma walks forward this time sigma's tanking for him and let's see what his energy's at nice he's at he's full energy on these two bubbles which is really nice for him because now again he's taking these flanks putting pressure from the side the Arisa uses shield he still has bubble available so I want to see how aggro he's going to go he does use bubble there. He's sending off some right clicks. His sig's really overextended there. His sig just managed to get out with, with with drone and and the bubble there. Nice bubble on the way out. He has his self bubble up here. I believe he might have been trying to tank for his ash there actually when he walked in front because he was already full energy. I think he's actually trying to tank for his ash. Yeah, he is. He's trying to soak, soak some energy for the Ash, or, or soak some damage so the Ash doesn't die because he's afraid of 
uh, her dying, and he doesn't have his self bubble up yet. So he's using that self bubble and just walking front to try and soak some damage there. I believe he's going to back off straight away after this here. The bubble ex uh, expires, he backs off, and he's just maintaining this position right now and building his ult. This is exactly what it, what he wants to be doing on the Zarya. Just, just building building your ult, building your grab, maintain, maintaining the energy. And this is a really good position for him. He's actually not putting a lot of pressure on shields either. He's just focusing on looking for right clicks, uh, pressure with right clicks from distance. Yeah. He is looking for left clicks when they are in a range where he feels like he can get some effective uh, effective damage down with the with the left click. This bubbles back up. You see the timing on that. I'm going to be ranting about this a lot, but. This is a the kind of the core concept of how to play Zarya is like managing your bubbles and playing around your bubbles. So it is a very important point. So again, right now he did overpeak that corner a little bit and he got Ash headshot, 64 HP, but he does manage to live. Uh, again, bottom right, three seconds, two seconds, playing around the corner, bubbles are back up. He peeks straight back out and he's now pressuring again, putting some pressure with those bubbles. He bubbles, almost gets punished there, and that's again why. Arissa is a very strong hero right now because she can punish. Um, oh, Sigma ate it. Okay. Ooh. So a lot happened there. Let me break that down. So. The enemy Hanzo uses dragon, Sigma eats it, he goes straight for the grab on the Orisa, which is not something I, I would usually expect, right? Because Orisa couldn't just walk out of this. So I'm wondering why he went for this grab. Like, what does this grab serve? Because Orisa doesn't care, she's just going to stand there. I don't know if this is even a good... Maybe he's expecting that people are walking behind the Orisa, because um, she's bongoing. So maybe he's expecting people are coming around this corner and just getting sucked into the grab. But I'm really not sure about this grab, like, if it was actually effective or not. It forced um, forced quite a few ults. Zoning grab, it seemed like a zoning grab, honestly. You might be right there. And again, like, this is the basic stuff. He's in the grab. Yoris is in the grab, but he realizes it's not a good grab and just, like, you know, his damage boost, so he just beams down this uh, this Baptiste with full energy. It's actually kind of disgusting how much damage the, the full energy Zarya has with the damage boost. Really nice tracking, yeah, he's gonna die. Throwing off the right clicks, just trying to build some energy, uh, build some, build some grab charge. Staying full energy. Yeah, he's playing a lot more defensively now his bubbles are down. It's looking good for a full hold right now. Hey. Okay. Let me slow that down slightly. So he's right now he's looking if his bap needs help. He's looking to see if his bap actually needs help. He realizes he doesn't need help, so he starts turning away. Um again just throwing off the right clicks. He sees the Arista shooting. He's deciding if he needs to bubble, but he realizes only Arissa shooting, so he's not in a situation where he needs to bubble that. Mercy has Mercy's pocketing the ash. Arissa sh should not be able to uh, kill through Mercy pocket. Okay, so team one engage with Bob and Hammond mines, and right away he's taking a flank with his bubble. Oh, that was so. Oh, I was so so close to being punished. He's really playing on the edge here with the Zarya. He takes the flank. Seems like he doesn't want to be playing the front line. He just wants to play these flanks and play to like find openings where he can get picks on the supports. And he's doing like he's doing a good job there. Like he gets a pick on the support, but he he does cut this very close. He does cut this very very close there. Notice how he's not focusing on the ball, he doesn't care about the tanks, he's just always going for these supports. He's taking these flanks, he's getting around the Orisa shield, rather than trying to go through it, and just putting pressure on the supports from the from these off angles. 
Um, the key is when he is taking these flanks, he's making sure that he has that self bubble. If he doesn't, he's going to get punished. Again, the same thing. And he gets another pick on the bat. So he's really playing it like a DPS. He doesn't... Okay. Very, very interesting graph. Was that an ego graph? Might have been an ego graph. I'm not sure. Anyway, he popped off this fight. Like, He's definitely doing a lot here on these flanks. Like, He's getting so many picks on these baps. Okay, he goes for the bubble onto the Mercy there just to try and deny the... No damage on the Mercy. It's a nice Arista pull actually. I think the Arista pull pulled out Taboo there. And he goes for the bubble. Again, still full energy right now. I'm actually going to play this fight in slow-mo, see if we can see anything different. Firing off the right clicks at the beginning of the fight. One thing you can notice actually with how he's dealing his DPS is how he's rotating his left and right click. So let's watch. Fires a right click first, left clicks, right click, and he seems to be looking for these right clicks when he sees the enemies are stacked, which is logical, right? If the enemies are stacked, you're going to be dealing more effective and more and a lot more damage if you're looking for those right clicks when people are stacked. So he's actually mixing in the left clicks here to try and beam. He's getting AOE damage as well as single single target damage here uh, on the soldier. His bubbles just went down, so he's backing off. Even though he sees the Arisa low, he's backing off because he doesn't want to ex overextend and potentially lose that energy. He's not in a rush to do anything. He's just trying to get damage down, maintaining the energy and, and staying alive so he can keep providing these bubbles for his teammates. And so really nothing special from him this fight. Just staying alive, playing around his bubble cooldowns and farming that grab really, putting a lot of pressure with his DPS. Okay, again, just fuck. throwing out these right clicks and you can see how much damage he's dealing to this team when they're walking in. You know, this is super annoying for them. They're all bouncing all over the place. He's both bubbles coming up. I want to see how he's going to play this. Team 1 are taking some, some off angles here. And I'm assuming this is not where he wants to be, right? Like, he doesn't want to be here shooting a Risa shield because this position for him is, you know, he, he's going to have more effective damage, like, pressuring other people. And this is not where Soldier wants to be, right? Soldier's trying to get away there. And he runs into a full charge Zarya. And it looks like they're going to full hold. I'm kind of disappointed, actually. I was hoping that we could see how he plays second point there with the Zarya. That was a, that was a pretty fast game. 